G'day guys, welcome back to Wine for the People's YouTube channel. My name's Henry and today we are giving you a deep dive into the Syrah grape variety. Syrah, or in Australia it's Shiraz mate, has become one of the flag bearers for rich, bold and decadent wines. Of course, it is synonymous with Australian wine, but Syrah has a detailed history, tracing its origins back to the Rhone Valley. The grape has now been spread far and wide across the globe, from Hawke's Bay in New Zealand, to the Italian vineyards of Sicily, and even as far as Chile. In quite a rapid time, since the 1970s, it's become one of the most widely planted grapes in the world, cracking the top 10 at number 7 in 2004. This has largely been propelled by the... and this is a new term here, the Australian Shiraz Valanche, right? uh, but has continued to be one of the most enduring wine styles and much loved varieties around the world. But by far, the most interesting thing about Syrah's grape variety is its incredibly unique, obscure and intricate history. Uh, there's a common misconception that Syrah is native to ancient Persia, which today is in Iran. Um, Shiraz, or Shiraz with a C, was a major centre in Persia for wine, and the idea is that Syrah was discovered by the Phoenicians in 600 BC or during one of the Crusades during 1005 or 1291, we know them very well. Uh, this theory is likely due to the fact that we here in Australia have slightly muddled history by calling the grape Shiraz rather than Syrah, like the rest of the world. The main reason this is now debunked is that the Crusaders, over their many sojourns into the Holy Lands, never really spent that much time in Persia. But luckily, that speculation has been clarified using the powers of DNA tracing. In 1998, the good people at UC Davis in California and the INRA in the south of France stumbled upon the origins of Syrah. It's actually a natural cross of a couple different niche varieties, uh, Mondeuse Blanc and Jureza. This likely occurred in the Isia, in the Isia. This likely occurred in the Isir, in the Rhone Alps. Uh, and for those playing at home, this also means that Pinot Noir is kind of Syrah's grandfather. Uh, from there, it became widely cultivated across the Rhone Valley and now has become one of the key grapes of the region, particularly in the Northern Rhone, where a few Appalachians craft the most sought after examples of the variety in the world. Uh, Hermitage is arguably the most famed of them all. The wines from the regions present immense concentration and cellarability and is one of the primary reasons for the Syrah's popularity around the world. Then there is Cote Roti, which is your Somme's favorite Syrah. It's elegant, vibrant, and gloriously aromatic. Thank thanks to a little help from its relative, Viognier, which up to 20% is allowed in the blend if the wine is to be labelled Cote Roti. Uh, Noah? Yeah. It is Viognier, yeah? Viognier, yeah. Viognier? What did I say? The wines from those regions generally tend to be out of 99% of the population's budget, as they're the most heralded examples of one of the world's most popular grape varieties. More wallet-friendly wines from the north tend to come from the Crozet Hermitage and Saint 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 Joseph, Yosef, and Crozes Hermitage. Crozes Hermitage, of course. More wallet-friendly wines from the north tend to come from Crozes Hermitage and Saint Joseph. <laughs> Saint Joseph. Just write it down the bottom, they'll figure it out. Um, which can have some incredible value for money and you get 95% of the way to the promised land. But if you're looking for more bistro daily drivers, you can find Syrah in many Cote de Rhone blends in various quantities. You'll just have to seek out some producer specific blends. Northern Rhone Syrahs differ from the more earthy leather examples of Hermitage, with more floral wines of Cote Roti and Cornas, uh, which are gaining in popularity with drinkers following the trend towards more fruit forward and drinkable wines. I mean, I say drinkable, but it's just my personal trends. I wrote some of the script. Uh, now, Syrah, that's a bit of editorial in your ed educational video. Uh, but Syrah has become a well-traveled variety. Frankly, it's grown all over the place. It's got a notable foothold in California, although it is well and truly second fiddle to Cabernet Sauvignon. It's made its way to South Africa, and even in the old world, as there are quite an extensive amount of it planted in Italy, Spain, Portugal, um, as the variety has become enduringly more popular. But now we get to the elephant in the room, and we've got to talk about one of the most notable places globally that grows Syrah. And of course, that would be uh, Australia where we have caused much confusion by calling it Shiraz. Shiraz has been in the country for nearly 200 years now, as it was brought over by the famed James Busby and established in the Hunter Valley. It was then brought down to South Australia, where alongside the Hunter, its fame boomed. 
Mushrooms. Uh, now the Barossa Valley is home to the world's oldest continuing Shiraz vine. And that was championed by winemakers that are now synonymous with the region. You're thinking Thomas Hardy, Joseph Seppelt, William Angove. Oh yeah, and there's this other little notable producer. You might have heard of them. Uh, we've mentioned them a bit on the show. Uh, Penfolds. We've talked about them a lot and they make some pretty decent Shiraz. Uh, the Australian style is a clear stylistic shift from the Rhone Valley styles. They are way more ripe and jammy, less tannic, and are generally quite liberal with their oak use. Notably American oak, which adds intense coconut, butterscotch, and vanilla flavors. Internationally, for better or worse, it's become the major recognized style of Australian wine. Alongside Cabernet from similar regions, we produce some of the most sought after examples of Shiraz or Syrah in the world. And it's not just Penfolds Grange. Think Henschke's Hill of Grace or The Laird by Tobruk. Torbrek? Thank you. It's amazing, I can do everything except read the basic words about the thing that we're talking about. So yeah, think Henschke's Hill of Grace or The Laird by Tobrek. Torbrek. Torbrek. The Laird. Now, this style of wine has become the hottest Australian export since Errol Flynn. Penfolds led the charge and many other styles followed in its wake. By the 70s, Shiraz became a new global sensation. Sales exploded and so did new plantings all over the world. Uh, Sicily now has Syrah planted more than Norello Mascalese, which is one of the region's most famed, you know, that's, that's their stuff, that's their home grape, but they've got Shiraz planted there more. Australia, has really created a phenomenon for the big red grape. It would be remiss to not also note that Australia has some notable cooler climate styles that are labelled Syrah. And this is the way to separate the two. Shiraz is made in a hot climate. Think Barossa, McLaren Vale. Um, just think Barossa and McLaren Vale. Uh, <laughs> I thought there was another word there. <laughs> Syrah is from a cool climate. You're talking Adelaide Hills, Yarra Valley, Canberra even, um, which are far more cherry, blueberry, and peppery styles. Now, as far as picking it in a lineup, as you've seen, I'm an expert at this, so pay close attention. Um, Shiraz or Syrah is pretty easy. It's not a shy grape variety. It's in your face and letting you know what it is straight off the bat. As far as differentiating from Syrah, Shiraz thing, um, Shiraz, you'll be smelling things like prunes, fig, ripe plums, likely a little bit of vanilla from the oak. Whereas for Syrah, you can spot a bit of black olive tapenade and white pepper aroma if you're on the right track. If your curiosity has been piqued by all this Syrah's Syrah big red chat, uh, and you're keen to be snapping up a few, here's a trifecta to put your money on. A good wheat night special is from the iconic Turkey Flat in the Barossa, whose butcher's block Shiraz punches well above its weight and will set you back about 25 bucks. Uh, for a damn good mid-tier, have a sus of Agricola. Callum Powell is a young buck of the wine world, making some banging examples of cooler climate Syrah from the Flaxman Valley of all places, which sits between the Eden Valley and the Barossa Valley. $80 well spent. But if you feel like flexing, Domaine Jamon Comte Roti, which there's no chance I'm saying it right, I can't afford to flex with those sorts of things. Just, again, down the bottom here. Uh, is one of the most sought after and collected Northern Rhone Syrahs. It's hard to get your hands on, but when you do, it really is the pinnacle of Syrah, but you're gonna have to drop north of 600 Australian to get it. Let me know down below if you wanna correct or preferably vigorously agree with anything I've said. Uh, definitely get me with some pronunciation down there. And be sure to subscribe if you liked this deep dive style of video, as myself and the boys have a few more in the pipeline and they'll be coming out soon. Cheers.